Hello everyone, uh, in this video I'd like to show you how to play back notes using SCAMP. So to start with, what you're going to want to do is import everything from the SCAMP library, and you do that by writing from SCAMP import star. The star here means import everything, all of the different names of objects. Uh, if you wanted, you could just say from SCAMP import session uh, when you want to use a session, and import each object individually when you want to use it. But it's going to be easier to just import everything. Speaking of sessions, the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a session object. So s equals session, open and close parentheses. Now, this is how you create an object in Python. The syntax is an uppercase word, that's the name of the object, followed by parentheses, which tells it to create the object. In SCAMP, a session combines several different things. It combines uh, playback, it combines uh, recording, and it combines uh, the ability to uh, move through time, change the tempo, that kind of thing. Almost every program that involves the SCAMP library is going to start by creating a session object. If you want, when you create the session object, you can give it some extra arguments. For instance, you can tell it to have a particular tempo by saying tempo equals 100 or something like that. Um, you could give it a default sound font to use. Um, by typing default sound font equals, let's say, synths. Oops. But for now, we're going to just leave it basic. Now, in this video, we're going to use the basic sound font playback. And in order to do that, we need to know which instruments are available. So the way to do this is you start by typing s.print, and then in Thony, the editor that I'm using, you can hit tab to autocomplete, and you can scroll down here and see print default sound font presets. So if we do that and we run the script, then it prints out a set of uh, your various sound font presets. The ones at the end are kind of ridiculous, but up here you can see that you start to get uh, standard MIDI sounds, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, this kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and create a clarinet. So the way that you would do that, and actually, before I do that, I'm going to comment out this line by putting a hashtag in front of it. That's the syntax in Python for commenting out a line. And I don't want it to print all the presets every time, so that's why I'm doing that. So anyway, the next step after that is to create an instrument. And um, the session, among other things, is the thing that holds all of your instruments. So to create an instrument, we have to ask the session to create that instrument. So the line is going to look something like this. Clarinet equals s dot new. If I hit tab again, I can see that there's different options. There's MIDI parts, OSC parts. For now, we're going to say new part, which uses the default sound font playback. And um, then in parentheses, I'm going to put the string clarinet. SCAMP uses whatever string you put here to look for a matching preset within the sound font that it's using. This clarinet right here uh, is just the name of the variable. We could have called it anything we wanted to. You'll notice here that I'm using dot notation. Uh, this s dot new part means ask s, the session object, to create a new part. Dot always means ask the thing on the left for the thing on the right. Finally, to play a note, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the clarinet to play a note. So we write clarinet dot play, and I'm going to hit tab again, and you can see you can play chords, play notes. I'll say play note. And then in parentheses, I'm going to give it three arguments. The first argument is a MIDI pitch value, so I'll give it 60 for middle C. The second argument is the volume, uh, and volume is scaled from 0 to 1. Since not all playback is done with MIDI, it didn't make sense to scale it from 0 to 127. So I'll make the note 0.8 to give it a decent amount of volume. And then finally, the last argument is the duration of the note, which by default, if you don't set a tempo, is going to be in seconds. So I'll make this last for two seconds. And let's go ahead and play it. If we want the note to be higher pitched, we can change this 60 to a 70. If we want it to last for less time, we can change this 2.0 to an 0.5. And there you go, you're playing a note back in SCAMP. Now if we want to play several notes, all we have to do is chain these play note calls one after the other. So we can say play this note, oops, 
play another note, play another note. And I'll change the pitch a little bit here. I'll say 80, 78, 77. And maybe I'll make the um, second note last a little longer, the third note be a little bit quieter, and the fourth note I'll make it last even longer and be as loud as possible. So let's take a listen to this. If we want to play back notes with different instruments, all we have to do is copy this line right here and create a new instrument. So let's say that I want an oboe. I'll say new part oboe. And maybe I'll make these middle two notes say oboe.play note. Remember the dot notation means ask a thing on the left for the thing on the right. So this is asking the oboe to play a note. Now suppose that we want this to keep looping that forever. What I can do is I can take these four lines and I can wrap it in a while loop. So I'll write while, oops, while true. And then I'm gonna indent all of these lines. Uh, if you're new to Python, indentation is the curly braces of the Python language. It's what creates a block of code. While true is just going to keep looping this block of four lines of code, so long as true is true, meaning forever. If I said while x is less than 10, it would keep doing this so long as x is less than 10. Um, but true is always true, which makes this go on forever. So let's take a listen to that. Speaking of putting something like x is less than 10 here, uh, why don't we create a variable called count? I'll say count equals zero. So what count is going to do is count how many times we've gone through the loop. So we'll start out by setting count equal to zero. And then at the end of the loop, after, after it plays the four notes each time, we're going to add one to the count variable. And we do this by writing count plus equals one. So the first time through the loop, count is gonna be zero, and then it's gonna be one, and then it's gonna be two, and then three, and then four. Of course, it's still gonna go on forever right now because this condition is always true. However, if we add while count is less than three, oops, I don't know why I typed two. If you write count is less than three, while count is less than three, it will play this, well, how many times do you think? It'll play it three times. First, when count is zero, then when count is one, then when count is two, and then when count is three, three is not less than three, so it will stop playing the loop. Now I'm gonna comment all of this out for right now. You can do that in Thonny, the editor that I'm using, by selecting the lines and pressing Control-3. The important thing is getting those hashtags in front of everything, which makes them not executed. So down here, I'll show you how to play notes using a for loop. One simple type of for loop in Python is a for range loop. So we could say for pitch in range 65, 77 clarinet dot play note pitch oops and now I'll make it 0.8 again and I'll make these quite fast notes 0.25 what this is going to do is execute this line of code over and over um, with pitch taking on the values 65 66 67 68 69 70 all the way up to 76. Uh, range does not include the top number, so it'll stop at 76. So if I run this code, we grab a chromatic scale. Now if chromatic scales aren't your jam, uh, you can replace this range uh, with a list. Uh, in Python, lists are made with square brackets and they're super interesting and flexible objects. 
And inside this list, I can put a list of different pitches that I'd like to play. So how about 60, 64, 66, 69, 67, 64, um, 60, 57, 54, 54, 54, 55. Let's see how that sounds. You can hear I was trying to go for the Simpsons theme. A natural thing to do might be to take this list and define it in a separate variable. So I'll copy it here. And before the for loop, I'll write pitch list, pitch underscore list equals this. In Python, normally you use this uh, lowercase underscore uh, format for variable names. I think some people call it slither case or snake case or something like that. So having done that, I can replace this list literal here with the variable pitch list. And it works better if you spell it correctly. And if I run this, uh, the same result. Now you might wonder at this point, what if I want the rhythms to be something different? So you might make a, a list of rhythms right here. I'll say, uh, durs list for durations, and I'll give it some numbers. Uh, let's say 1.5, 1.0, 1.0, 1.5, I'm going to copy these right here and use them again. And then I'm going to finish it off with a bunch of 0.5s. Um, and so you might think, okay, for pitch and pitch list, we'll do this. And then we could actually say for duration in durs. And by the way, tab completion again, I press tab to, um, to get it to complete durs list. And then you might think, well, I'll put durs here, uh, sorry, uh, duration here. And I should be off and running, right? doesn't sound right, does it? It's just playing the, the same pitch over and over. So what's going on here is for each pitch, so it starts with pitch 60, and then it plays these durations over and over for pitch 60. And it plays the same set of durations over and over for pitch 64, then for pitch 66. So that's not really what we wanted. We wanted a one-to-one -one matching of this pitch with this duration, this pitch with this duration, etc. It turns out the way to do this in Python, Python has a wonderful way of doing this, which is to say for pitch comma duration in zip pitch list durs list. And I think zip is a wonderfully evocative name. You can kind of imagine uh, a kind of zipper merge on a freeway or something like that. Or I guess you could imagine a literal zipper, which is what that's named after. And so what this is going to do is take one pitch and one duration, then the next pitch and the next duration, and let's take a listen to it. Now, of course, that's a little bit slow and sad. It's, it sounds like a particularly sad part of an episode. So if we want to speed it up, we could, uh, up here, we could say tempo equals 120. Um, this is using what's called a keyword argument in Python. Down here at the bottom, we were using positional arguments. Uh, Scamp knows to expect uh, the pitch, the volume, and the duration in that order, positions uh, 1, 2, and 3. A keyword argument, on the other hand, you tell it what you're talking about by just saying tempo equals. So if we run this, You could also have, after this line, just said s.tempo equals 120. Uh, that's the, that turns out to be the same thing in Scamp. It's not always the same thing in Python, but in Scamp it is, because uh, the session has a tempo attribute. Remember, dot notation, ask s for its tempo, and set it to 120. When you give it a keyword argument here saying tempo equals 120, it automatically does this under the hood. So anyway, those are the basics of uh, playing notes using Scamp. Uh, stay tuned for a couple more advanced things that you can do.
Okay, so from here I'd like to explore a couple more advanced features that you can use when playing notes. I'm going to start by deleting some of this. I don't think we need all of this. So one of the first things that I'll point out is that there's a optional fourth argument to the play note function. And in this argument, you can specify lots of extra properties. So for instance, if we want the playback to be staccato, I can put in quotes here, staccato. And if we play that back, So what that's doing by default is cutting the length of the note in half in playback. Later when we create notation out of this, it will render as a, a, a full length note with a staccato dot. If you really want to, you can actually adjust the way that staccato is translated into a difference in playback. You can also use this properties uh, argument for stuff like if you want to make sure that the note is spelled as a sharp, you can put that there. Or if you want to use a spelling that's consistent with the key of B flat major, you can put that. You can also use this fourth properties argument to uh, do other parameters of playback. So for instance, uh, vibrato, if I want to say, you, you always do param underscore and then the name of the thing that you want to affect. Now this won't actually do anything with the default uh, sound font playback. But if notes are being played through a, a OSC playback where it's sending OSC messages to like Super Collider or something, uh, saying param vibrato 5, something like this is a, a way of adjusting the vibrato parameter of playback. In general, if you want to understand what you can do with this fourth parameter, you're going to want to go to the API documentation right here. And um, I actually have it loaded up already, uh, play note right here. You can see the properties argument gives you all sorts of information about what you can do with it. Uh, it actually takes a dictionary, um, but you can use a string as a sort of shortcut. Okay, the next thing that you should probably know is that while by default uh, calls to play note are blocking, meaning you don't move on to the next line of code until this line is finished playing the entire note. Um, while that's true, you can turn that off if you want. So for instance, what I might do in this case is I could have the oboe play a long note. So oboe.play note, and we'll have the oboe play a note up at a high C. Uh, we'll make it pretty loud, and we'll make it last for five seconds. Um, now, if we, if we run it right now, we're going to get a long, high oboe note followed by the Simpsons theme. But there's a keyword argument that I can add here, blocking equals false. And what this does is cause this note to play in parallel with whatever comes after it. It'll start the note, it'll last for five seconds, but then it'll immediately move on to the next line of code. So let's take a listen to this. Of course, this param vibrato thing isn't doing anything because, as I said, the sound font playback doesn't know what to do with it. You may have already noticed this, but when I autocomplete play, there's another option besides note. If I say play, you can also play a chord. Play chord expects a list of numbers for the pitch argument. So let's say 76, uh, 79, and 84. Another advanced option that some of you might be interested in is that the pitches do not have to be integers. Uh, Scamp is designed to be microtonal by default. So if you give it a floating point value, it'll handle all of the MIDI pitch bend messages under the hood so that you get exactly what you want. So for instance, let's say that we want this F sharp to be kind of on the high side. I'll make it 60.5 and then uh, make these F sharps kind of wiggle back and forth between 54.5 and 54. And then this 60, I'll make it a little bit flat for no reason whatsoever, 59.7. Let's take a listen. Another neat feature is that you can do glissandi. The way you do this is that you give the play note function a list. So this list of pitches will be interpreted as a glissando through which the part moves. Let's take a listen. Mm -hmm. 
we can probably make that glissando a little more interesting by having it go back down again. So let's set this go down to 70. The ideal in Scamp is that you're always able to change uh, parameters of playback in a continuous manner. So actually, this same principle can be applied to the volume argument. Let's go back to treating this as a chord. Play chord. And instead of a single value for the uh, volume argument, I'm going to give it a few different values. It's going to start at point 0.8, then go down to point 0.3, then point 0.2, and then come up to 1.0. Let's take a listen to that. So you see how the volume faded out, then faded back in. Now again, by default, each of these stages is going to be equally spaced in time. But the truth is that under the hood, they're being converted to a much more flexible envelope object. Again, we can learn more about this in the API documentation. So I'll search here for envelope. And you can see right here, this is actually the envelope class. This is a module. So if I click on the envelope, we can see that there's actually a number of different ways of creating an envelope. A common one to use might be from levels and durations, which lets you give a sequence of levels and a sequence of durations uh, in between those levels. You can also optionally give it a list of curve shapes. So if we go back to the code, I might create a kind of forte piano crescendo by doing this. F P cresc equals envelope. By the way, envelope is one of the names that was imported, one of the types of objects that was imported when we imported star. So we can say envelope dot from levels and durations. And I'll give it a couple levels. I'll say 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 1.0. And then for durations, I would like it to quickly drop down from 0.8 to 0.2 and then slowly build back up to 1.0. And this envelope I can actually pass to the volume argument. The other thing that I can do is if I want to see this, I can ask it to plot with fp cresc dot show plot. Let's see how that goes. Ah, oh, now you may run into this problem actually. You need the matplotlib library in order to plot, and I haven't installed it here. In order to do that, we can go to tools, manage packages, mat plotlib, if we search for it, uh, then we can install it. And if we go ahead and try again, it gives us a graph of the envelope that we're about to use. And let's take a listen. Finally, if you want the shape of the envelope not to be linear, you can use a third argument, which is the curve shapes. Here, a negative value makes it change early, and a positive value makes it change late. So we might want, in this case, to start with, say, negative 5 and... Uh, for the last part, go to positive 5, which will change the curve shape as follows. These envelope objects were heavily inspired by the envelope in Super Collider. Let's take a listen to that. These numbers can actually range from negative infinity to positive infinity, with 0 being linear. The best way to get a sense of it is to just experiment with numbers and try showing the plot. Anyway, those are some more advanced features that you can use when playing notes in Scamp. But feel free also to just stick with the basics. There's so much that you can do by just putting play note calls in an interesting order. Thanks.